Okay. Uh, my name is Odie Hawkins, and it's Tuesday evening. And uh, once again, I would like to share with you a reading of columns I wrote for the African Times newspaper in 1996, 1998. And once again, I'm just simply uh, reading the columns to show how they parallel what's going on today in 2024. This is back in 1996. But first, I have to share something else with you. Uh, our friend in Accra, Ghana, Susan Amagashi, just uh, put me in touch with a friend of mine who has been arrested for something called drunk driving here in the United States. And I called my friend to ask him what happened. And this is what he told me. <clears throat> I wasn't drunk driving. They, killed, they accused me of drunk driving. I wouldn't have been driving if I had been drinking. I had been drinking before I started driving. And what they were trying to make me say, you know, I'm going to leave out all the profanity and stuff like that that was being used. Uh, at the time that they pulled me out and said, uh, we want to have you perform a test. And, you know, one of the tests was to close your eyes and hold your hand, well, hold your, hold your left hand up, hold your right, hold your left hand up, and so forth and so on. I couldn't do any of that. How many people can close their eyes and raise their left hands? You know, that stuff is, requires a lot of... Uh, uh, coordination. Maybe Zola Selena Hawkins could do it because she's an athlete. <laughs> but uh, we got into a thing, you know. I have to admit they were cordial. They did not beat up on me or nothing like that. They were white policemen, yes. Uh, one of them was a woman. Uh, I call her white police lady. And she didn't call me any names. But uh, it, it gets to a point where a citizen is almost uh, uh, reluctant to, to get into his car after he's been drinking. You know, <laughs> you don't want to drive while you're drinking, but if you drink and uh, you have a cup of, you know, something before you start driving, then that's on you. And I can assure anybody that I have never, ever uh, had an accident or run over anybody while I was drinking. I hit a couple of people while I was driving, but I hadn't been drinking. <laughs> so, uh, having said all that, uh, you gonna loan me some money, man, so I can pay this fine. Fictitious Tales by Odie Hawkins. <laughs> so, is liquor store Rufus gone? Or? <laughs> well, uh, our friend in Ghana, Susan mm -hmm. Amagashi, mm -hmm. uh, uh, <laughs> the video she was had, called Mr. Had, Turner she... Driving Drunk. That was the video call. The YouTube was Mr. Turner driving drunk. Well, I'm 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 just playing I'm with just Rick, playing on, with, on, on the thing because I've known a couple of people like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, so, off to African Media Watch. Off to, off, off to. This is a show where a lot of things happen. It's ubiquitous too. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, now we'll get a little bit more serious. This column was written in June of 1998. Uh, and it, uh, it sort of encloses uh, the trip that Clinton made to Ghana in 1998. It's called Africa Calling. We waited in vain for the lava of interesting feature prime time cutlets of news to spew forth from the media on the heels of President Clinton's 12-day visit to Ghana, Senegal, Botswana, South Africa, Uganda, and Rwanda. Our thirst for information was sharpened by UN Secretary General Kofi Annan's conciliatory pilgrimage to Rwanda. We are still hungering and thirsting. Apparently, 
mainstream information apartheid simply relegates Africa and African-based affairs to an unattractive Bantu stand that has only one element worth noticing, a war, a coup, a famine, a general catastrophe, and the latest Tarzan movie. No complex reporting of what is going on in Africa would be available were it not for the African Times, shout out, and a too small collection of bomb newspapers and magazines. The obvious truth, this obvious truth can be easily determined by closely reading the Los Angeles Times, the Chicago Tribune, and the New York Times for a week. I do have to say that the New York Times has been way ahead of all the rest for quite a while. And it doesn't get much better on the radio. Africa is blanked out of that medium except for those esoteric PBS stations that play African-derived music. We've strained our ears listening for talks or talk show formats that would make an effort to have the kind of inform discussions about Africa that would do a great deal to dispel many of the stereotyped, warped attitudes and negative mindsets. For example, it seems quite ironic that a major league American sports organization would design <laughs> tailor-made affirmative action clauses to defend white American distance runners from the hordes of too quickly running Kenyans. The sports pages swept this marathon example of racism right under their collective rug. No doubt the debates about this gruesome example of niggardly thinking would have flushed a lot of stuff out of the briar patch. American television has so carefully conditioned and programmed the American cycle to dismiss Africa, African-based events, and possibilities that most of them do not question the reason why they can stare at the two for weeks and never see any African news unless there's a war, a coup, a famine, a natural disaster, or the release of the latest Tarzan flick. I'm hard on the Tarzan flick, I'm yeah, telling you, I'm hard on it. Yeah. <laughs> hard, <laughs> brother, hard on the Tarzan flick. I know, I know. Yeah, no, nothing like going there and watching it on TV. Hey, love. <laughs> and all the Africans enjoying it. <laughs> hard on it. Hard on it. I know. <laughs> There's no doubt in our minds that many of the problems that some, too many, of our youth have relating to their ancestral homeland stem from the lack of information that they are receiving, that mm. they have received. The young brother said, I ain't no African nothing. Mm -hmm. I'm a crip. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Help us. Excuse me, what? Okay. You heard me. I ain't no African nothing. I'm a crip. Ancestors rolling. Small world, huh? Ancestors. Hard to imagine that it could get much worse than that, but it does. Mm -hmm. Ride the bus from Slauson and Weston to Imperial and Weston during any school day and try to count the number of times you can hear African-American youth call out to each other, NIGGA! Mm -hmm. Do they really know what they're saying? The movies have conducted a relentless campaign to cold cock any positive images of Africans. The African student, played by Ivan Dixon and Raised in the Sun, seems to be the last positive African figure any of us can recall. Since then, we haven't been besieged by African characters in any medium. And when we are exposed to an African character, he, she, seems to be stuck in a social time war. The question is unavoidable. Why the whiteout? Why the White House? <laughs> <laughs> what benefits can possibly be gained from relegating news, information, cultural standards, ideas, materials from one of the largest continents on earth to the level of a few footnotes? 
the analogy of the sports organization working against its own long-term interests by wanting to lower the level of competition definitely fits the white out of Africa. I'm talking about the Kenyans. The Kenyans are not going to begin to run slower or become invisible men because a collection of racist minds have decided to cut off their noses to spite their ambitions. Africa, with its tremendous populations of young people and unlimited potentialities, should be given daily mention at every level of the media. African Americans, even if they are still Negro-centric, should demand to be as well informed about events in Nigeria, Angola, Ghana, South Africa, Kenya, Ethiopia, Egypt, that's in Africa too, Libya, Algeria, Senegal, and Mali, amongst others, as well as we are informed about events in Bosnia, Germany, France, England, Ireland, Poland, Hungary, Israel, Iceland, Romania, and Indonesia. The bottom line is there is no African presence in the American media. We must struggle to change that. Next, we'll take a look at the perceptions of African Americans in the Ghanaian media. Stay tuned. <clears throat> No, no, you ain't gonna arrest me. You ain't gonna arrest me. How you gonna arrest me? I've been arrested. Uh, was it a, a, a good point about no Africans portraying, you know, African Africans? But in Martin Luther King's movie, they had David. Oh, Keller, what is his name? David Oluwan. Uh, he's a, he's an actor, ex an actor. I believe he's from I believe he's from Nigeria. Oyelo, Oyelowo, David uh, Oyelowo. Yeah, yeah. I believe he's from uh, Nigeria. Uh, so he, he played was, Martin Luther King. Yeah, he played. Not King. an African. Well, he played, he played King and uh, Selma. I think it was. Yes, Selma. and Selma he did. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, I don't have a problem with that. However, if that is the case. And that uh, has been the case for a while. You can name uh, a number of African actors who had leading roles, my mind blanks out for As African Americans. Uh, yeah. Uh, it would be probably very difficult to have the same thing happen in Africa as someone who uh, had the opportunity to write and direct uh, an African television show called Inspector Betty Arco. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that I was one amongst many, many thousands. Mm -hmm. I think I didn't realize it at the time, but how many how many African American uh, artists, writers, directors, producers or whatever could go to Ghana or Nigeria or Cameroon and get a job to writing and directing uh, a movie or a television show about some something happening in Africa. Thank you, Kojo. Like I said, I was, I was very fortunate to do that. I give all thanks to uh, the producer, Kojo Yanka, mm -hmm. who gave me that opportunity. Uh, but we have another kind of thing going on because African actors, matter of fact, the, the scene was becoming kind of, kind of dicey there because mm -hmm. uh, some actors, I know active friends, were complaining gently about roles being given to African actors. Uh, who was the, the guy who played the lead in uh, 12 Years a Slave? Mm -hmm. He has the most uh, Kiofa for or something from Nigeria. Mm -hmm. X once again, excellent actor. After. Mm -hmm. And he played the role well. But uh, my actor, African-American actor friend was saying, well, <laughs> we, know the, we know the scenery a little bit better than any of them could possibly know it. How could he come from London, by way come to, from Nigeria by way of London? Chueto Ijofor. Uh, I can't Chueto, pronounce his name. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, it's C H I W E T E L. Yeah. Ijofori. Ijofor. I guess. Well, it was a. Uh, it was an African American director, I believe. Mm -hmm. So, Twelve Years a Slave is one you could point at that had uh, Steve McQu uh, screenplay by John Ridley, director Steve McQueen. 
Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, mm -hmm. uh, we don't need to quibble about that, and there's no need for us to have any kind of right. uh, yang yes. yang. But yeah, the point the point is, well is that uh, we need to have more information about African events in mm -hmm. American media, mm -hmm. and specifically, I, I might point out in African American media. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm very disappointed sometimes when I pick up one of uh, the African-American-oriented newspaper, whether it be the Wave or the Sentinel, mm -hmm. and go through the whole newspaper and not find any reference to where we came from. Motherland, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, just maybe maybe there might be a little column that said right in here, mm -hmm. here's an African joke. Right. Or here's how your great-grandmother came to be called uh, uh, Mama Pleasant or whatever, whatever. So, having had a chance to write about all that, in addition to complaining about that that traffic ticket. <laughs> Thank you, Susan. <laughs> Thank you, Susan, for Thank sharing you, Susan. and bringing up liquor store roofers. <laughs> yeah. One of the things I love about our sister in Ghana is yes. that she is always pointing up the most positive things. If they're not absolutely positive, they're usually, they're usually humorous. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, we can send her information about the latest police shooting of a black man in the back. Mm -hmm. But it uh, seems that that doesn't happen very much in Ghana. They have Probably. a lot of black backs and a lot of policemen, but policemen are quick, not as quick to shoot for some reason. Fortunately. Yeah. But yes, we're blessed with friends like Susan and uh, Rama Brew. Mm. And Leonard uh, Kennedy. By Pastor Eddie. Oh, so. Our, our friend Pastor Edmund O'Forty Ba. Yes, yes. And to them all, we say until next time. Until, oh, and Kofi. Okay. Oh, Kofi. Oh, Kofi. Oh, my brother, you know. <laughs> we forgot to mention you, and you're going to be angry about this, but please don't show us your angry face. <laughs> please this don't is true. show us your angry face. <laughs> all right, we miss you all. Hope to see you in the not too far distant future. Oh, you want a dog? Oh, you want it? Miss. <laughs> oh, website www.odiehawkins.com.